Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and high recommended model. I've been waiting on this model for a very long, long time. I was wondering if anybody was going to make this model. And Gemini Jets delivered on this one. Okay, today I'll be doing a review on a Gemini Jets Pan Am Boeing 747-100 in the Billboard livery in a 1-200 scale model. I purchased this model at Troy's Toys based out of Olden Park, Kansas. His website is www.troystoysinc.com. Allow me to share you some information about the history of Pan Am and how there is the uh, biggest innovator in acquiring this aircraft as well. Okay, if you would please. Pan Am or Pan American Airways Incorporated was an American based airline that was founded as a shell company on March 14, 1927, in Key West, Florida, by airports major Henry H. Hat Arnold. Carl A. Spatz and John H. Joet as a counterbalance to the German-owned Colombian carrier SCADTA and commenced operations seven months later on October 19, 1927 as a scheduled air mail and passenger service operating between Key West, Florida and Havana, Cuba by chartering a Fairchild FC-2 float plane from the small Dominican Republic carrier West Indian Aerial Express. The airline operated under the Pan American Airways name until January 3, 1950. That's when Pan American Airways Corporation officially became Pan American World Airways Incorporated, even though the airline had begun calling itself Pan American World Airways seven years earlier in 1943. Then fast forward to November 1, 1972. That's when the corporate name was officially changed to what has become known to the whole world as Pan Am. Pan Am also became a major corporation that was credited with many innovations that shaped the international airline industry, including the widespread use of jet aircraft, the jumbo jet, and the computerized reservation system. Pan Am was the principal and the largest international air carrier in the United States of America until January 8, 1991, when Pan Am was forced to declare bankruptcy and after several failed attempts to restructure and reorganize the airline via bankruptcy restructuring protection, Pan Am officially ceased operations after 64 years of service on December 4, 1991, and the carrier's last flown scheduled operation flight was Pan Am Flight 436, which departed that day from Bridgetown, Barbados to Miami, Florida, under the command of Captain Mark Powell flying the Clipper Goodwill, which was a Boeing 727-200, which bared the registration ship number in 368 PA as Pan Am became the third American major airline to shut down in 1991 after Eastern Airlines and Midway Airlines respectively. The corporate headquarters of Pan Am for much of its history from the 1930s until 1963 was located in the Chrysler Building which is located in New York City then moved their glo global headquarters to the Pan Am Building which is also located in New York City then relocated its headquarters from the Pan Am building in New York City to new offices in the Miami, Florida area, while the airline's main hub and base of operations was located at the World Port, which was located on the grounds of John F. Kennedy International Airport, which is located approximately 15 miles southeast of Midtown Manhattan in the Queens neighborhood section of Jamaica, Queens, New York. Pan Am's other hubs were located at Frankfurt Airport, located in Frankfurt, Germany, London Heathrow Airport, located in London, England, Miami International Airport located in Miami, Florida, Tokyo Haneda Airport located in Tokyo, Japan up until 1978, and, and Tokyo Narita International Airport located in Narita, Japan from 1978 to 1985. And the focus cities of Pan Am were located at Berlin Tempelhof Airport located in Berlin, Germany from 1950 to 1975, Berlin Tegel Airport located in Berlin, Germany from 1975 to 1990, Honolulu International Airport, located in Honolulu, Hawaii, up until 1985. Houston Bush Intercontinental Airport, located in Houston, Texas. Logan International Airport, located in Boston, Massachusetts. Los Angeles International Airport, located in Los Angeles, California. Chicago O'Hare International Airport, located in Chicago, Illinois. San Francisco International Airport, located in San Francisco, California. And Washington Dulles International Airport, located in Dulles, Virginia. Pan Am, at the height of its peak, flew to 86 countries on six inhabited continents with an operating fleet of 226 aircraft that included 66 Boeing 747s, in which 44 of those were the Boeing 747-100 variant, 7 of those were the Boeing 747-200 variant, 1 Boeing 747-273C cargo aircraft, 
two Boeing 747-221 F freighter aircraft and 11 Boeing 747 SP special performance aircraft. And the Boeing customer code for Pan Am was 21. All right. Okay, this is the uh, front of the box you're looking at here, folks. This is the gold and gray Gemini 200 decal there. The Pan Am title and the logo right there. The computer generated picture of the aircraft the aircraft type and the model scale information right there as well all right all right this is the back of the box you see here all the Gemini jets information the Boeing efficient license product decal right there the Facebook uh, decal right there you can go to their social media page to get information about this model as well there's the Pan Am decal right there you know and then there's the rest of the information right there as well all right all right this is the top of the box here with all the Gemini 200 decal right there and then there's the warning information right there, okay? All right, and this is the bottom of the box. You can also go to their website there as well at www.geminijets.com. You can get information about this model as well as other releases there as well, okay? All right, this is the left side of the box here, all the information there plus the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type and the model information. And this is the right side of the box. You see the same information you saw on the left side of the box. All right. Okay. This is the uh, the model stand that actually came with the model here. Very strong and sturdy. And then you see the little pad in there, folks. I mean, when you put your model on the stand, such as this one, it will prevent it from being damaged or scratched. So that's what that black pad in there is for. Okay. All right, and this little plastic bag you see here with all this stuff in here, there's two little toothpicks in there. These are the gear replacement doors. Stay tuned as I go into the uh, details for the purpose of these later on in the model review, okay? Okay, with all that information out of the way about the history of Pan Am, and I still got some more information to share with you later on, okay? All the details here in this box, the model stand, and the gear replacements. With no further ado, folks, here is the model. There it is, folks. The Gemini Jets Pan Am Boeing 747-100 in the billboard livery in a 1-200 scale model. Alright, I'm about to share you some information about how Pan Am and Boeing came together and eventually revolutionized the air travel in the airline industry with this iconic uh, jumbo jetliner you see here, the 747-100. It began back in the 1960s when Boeing was approached by then Pan Am President Juan Tripp to build an aircraft twice the size of the 707 due to the airport congestion worsened by increasing number of passengers carried on smaller aircraft. So in 1965, Joe Sutter, the father of the Boeing 747, may he rest in peace, he passed away last year at 95 years old in 2016, initiated a design study with Pan Am and other airlines to better understand their requirements. And Boeing responded by designing the 747 shortly thereafter as Pan Am was able to influence and design and the development of the Boeing 747 to an extent unmatched by a single airline as Pan Am became the actual launch customer of the Boeing 747 when it placed an order for 25 Boeing 747-100 aircraft for 525 million US dollars on April 25, 1966 and received their very first one which bared the registration ship number N733 PA on December 12, 1969, and prior to the airline's inaugurated flight, Pan Am flew several of its 747s to major airports in the United States as a public relations effort, allowing the public to tour the airplane. Then the official inauguration took place on January 21, 1970, which departed New York's John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York and flew nonstop to London Heathrow Airport in London, England. As Pan Am carried 11 million passengers in 1970, the year it revolutionized air travel with the first ever wide-body jetliner. However, there were a series of incidents that ultimately occurred that involved some of Pan Am's Boeing 747 jumbo jetliner. One in particular was Pan Am Flight 1736 that was actually involved in the Tenerife Airport disaster that occurred on March 27, 1977 when a KLM Royal Dutch Airlines Boeing 747 jumbo jetliner ultimately collided with this particular Pan Am Boeing 747 jumbo jetliner, which resulted in 583 casualties in which 335 of those passengers were actual Pan Am passengers, while 61 actually survived. Then there's Pan Am Flight 73. That was also a Boeing 747 flight, which was hijacked in Karachi, Pakistan on September 5, 1986, where 20 people were killed 
including the chief purser of the flight in Indian National, near Jabonet, who was 22 years old. They got stories about that woman. You can go look that up too. I'll just say this. If it wasn't for this heroic woman, it'd probably be more dead people on that flight, okay? But may she rest in peace as well. And then there's Pan Am Flight 103. It was also utilized using a Boeing 747. Exploded in mid-air, then crashed in a residential area of Lockerbie, Scotland on December 21st, 1988. Shortly after takeoff from London's Heathrow Airport that was bound for Detroit, Michigan via New York JFK where 270 people perished including 243 passengers, 16 crew members, and 11 civilians on the ground. May those people who lost their uh, loved ones on this flight, may they rest in peace as well. Now let's talk about delivery here. This is my, I love this billboard delivery, all right? This was Pan Am's last livery scheme, which is actually called the Billboard Livery, which was unveiled in December 1984 and became the airline's signature livery scheme look until Pan Am ceased operations on December 4, 1991, as Pan Am became one of the first airlines to actually begin sporting the Billboard Livery look on their aircraft. So now you got an idea about the history of Pan Am, how they revolutionized the airline industry with this aircraft here, and how they played a big role in it and all that stuff in the history of the uh, events that involved this aircraft so with no further ado here is let's get down to the nitty-gritty and let me show you all the details on this aircraft now show me and let's roll okay we're gonna start on the port slash left side of the aircraft we see the nose gears right here the nose gear struts the nose gear light I'll show you a better visual view of those later on in the review and then there's the nose gear door right there featuring the partial registration number you look real close it's 741 right there there's the Peter tube and static part the nose cone the windshield wipers, the cockpit window. I'll give you a better visual view of those later on. And then there's the detailed view of the uh, L1 passenger door right there. And then this title right here, Clipper Sparking Wave. I thought it was sparkling, but I looked it up. It's, 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 it's correct on there, okay? Pan Am began back in 1931 to carry the nickname Clipper on all of their aircraft as the name was harking back to the 19th century Clipper ship that were the only American passenger aircraft of the time capable of international travel. The original name of this aircraft was actually called Clipper Kit Carson when this aircraft was first delivered to Pan Am on February 28, 1970, as this aircraft was later renamed and given the new name Clipper Spark and Wave on June 26, 1981. All right, now you got an idea of the history of the Clipper right there. They didn't want all the aircraft, okay? And then you come right here, you see the big Pan Am billboard title right there, which I find impressive right there. And then you see right here, that's the inboard landing light right there, very detailed there as well, okay? Okay, we're still on the port side of this aircraft. You see these nice little engines right here, very detailed and impressive as well. See the engine cones right here as well? All right, these were the Pratt & Whitney JT9D-78 engines that were used on this particular Pan Am Boeing 747-100 aircraft, okay? Now I'm going to let you uh, see these uh, engines from the front angle. I'm going to turn this mile around and let you see the uh, engine. The turbo fan blades do spin, folks, all right? Okay, now you're looking at the uh, front angle of these engines. No engine strike, but the turbo fan blades do spin here. Perfect. Over here as well. Okay, perfect. And then you got a better inboard uh, view of the inboard landing lights right here. And then there's the bogey gear there on this side there as well, all right? Now you're looking at the engines on the uh, starboard side, and they spin here as well. Okay, same over here as well. All right, perfect. And then you got the uh, inboard land lights here on the edge of the wing there, as well as the bogey gear here on this side as well. Uh, the bogey gear broke off there. I'll go into that in a minute, okay? Okay, now you're looking at the upper front part of the aircraft, you got a better view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the nose cone, very detailed there. And now you're looking at the, uh, the front nose gears right here, the nose gear struts, even the gear lights right there, and the front, uh, nose gears doors right there as well. So with no further ado, I'm going to take it back to the uh, port side because there's more information shared over there as well, alright? Okay. Now you're looking at the edge of the wing here, the wingtip right here, the red navigation light inside that little painted in red inside there. And then this little wingtip device you see at the edge of the wingtip. These wingtip devices are actually called high frequency antennas and prior to the Boeing 747-400 variant from the 747-100 to the 747-300. 
These high frequency antennas were installed on the wingtip of the aircraft and the purpose of these high frequency antennas were for radio and communication from the aircraft per se, okay? Now you gotta deal with that, that little device there for, okay? All right, now underneath these wings and on, behind these engines, you see the bogey gears here as well, the bogey gear door, the bogey gear struts there, and then there's the center bogey gears right there as well. Very detailed, all right? Okay, we're at the back of the aircraft here on the port side still. There's the registration ship number, N741PA. Registration ship number N741PA. This was Pan Am's ninth Boeing 747-100 aircraft to enter the Pan Am fleet. And the first flight on this aircraft took place on February 13, 1970 and was delivered to Pan Am on February 28, 1970. This aircraft, however, was withdrawn from Pan Am's fleet on December 17, 1990, then sold it to the uh, Airlock Company. Then this aircraft was sold to S.P. Bernstein in March 1992, then sold to PALC2 Incorporated in January 1993, then was subleased to Southern Air Transport on April 2nd, 1993, then sold to Polar Air Cargo on April 20th, 1993, and eventually this aircraft was sent to the Mobile Aerospace Teardown Facility located in Mobile, Alabama on September 7, 1997, where this aircraft was eventually scrapped. Okay, now you got our deal, all right? Alright, now with the back of the aircraft, looking at the tail here, the nice little logo right there. I love that logo. How about y'all? Okay? Now, this was Pan Am's eighth and final logo design that was actually called the Globe Logo, which was unveiled on November 1st, 1972. This logo also has some other nickname that it actually goes by, such as the Blue Ball Logo and the Blue Meatball Logo, which actually became the signature trademark logo for Pan Am from 1972 until it ceased operations in 1991. The original Globe logo, however, was actually created and designed in 1955 by New York architects Edward Lauren B. Barnes and Charles Forbert. Okay. And then there's the American flag decal here above the Pan Am logo. And this flag decal represents the country where Pan Am previously operated as one of the major flag carriers of the United States of America. Okay. Now you're looking at the back of the aircraft here, you see the APU auxiliary power unit uh, is also right here and there's a hole there, very detailed. And then there's the strobe light underneath the auxiliary power unit exhaust hole, okay? Now you're looking at the rear view angle of this Pan Am Boeing 747-100 from the rear view angle. Any great? Awesome. All right, now you're looking at the, uh, the starboard side of this aircraft, you see the... Uh, the nose gear, the nose gear struts, the gear lights, the nose gear door with the partial registration number on there, the front cargo container door, the clipper spark and wave title right there, the static port and the pedal tubes right there, the nose cone, windshield wipers, windshield wipers there, sorry about that, the cockpit window, the pilot escape hatch door, and then there's the Pan Am title right there, perfect, and then there's the inboard landing lights right there. And then you got these Pratt and Whitney engines over here, very detailed right there as well. And you got a view of the uh, bogey gears right here on the starboard side. All right, I'm about to show you. I remember I was telling you that the, one of the bogey gear doors fell off, so I'm gonna show you right here. Okay. Okay. Now you got a better view of the bogey gears here on the starboard side as well as the center bogey gear there. There, that's like a bogey gear door there. It fell off somewhere. It snapped. It broke off somewhere. I've, it's around here somewhere. But anyway. But and that's no big deal though. I can glue that back on there, alright? Hold on. I got to a different angle. Hold on. Okay, a lot better, okay. Now you got this nice little silver uh the silver uh underbelly, which is impressive. And then there's the rear cargo container door right there, and then there's the bulk bin door, and then there's the um, registration ship number right there. And then this has a nice Pan Am logo right there, as well as the American flag decal there as well, all right? Okay, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft and the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft in detail, here's one feature. The good news is the gears do roll. Impressive. And they tilt as well. Awesome. And, and of course, you know that uh, nose gear right here swivels there as well, okay? So, with that said, allow me to show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, shall we? Let's roll. Okay, we're going to start at the, uh, the upper part of the aircraft here. See the nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit window, the podscape hatch door right there above on the distinctive hum, along with the anti-collision beacon light here. 
the high frequency antenna there. You see the Pan Am titles on both sides of the aircraft. Another antenna. The vertical stabilizer. And you see that little dot right there, folks, as well as over here as well. Those are the luminaire lights that light up this tail here when it flew at nighttime, okay? Now, let's check out the wings. No wing walkway, but you got the flaps, slats, ailerons, spoilers. See the nice little engine right there. Fuel dump valve, and then there's the uh, high frequency antenna on the edge of the wing tip there. Same over here, folks. Flap slats, ailerons, engines, fuel dump valve, and the high frequency antenna on the edge of the wing tip on this side here as well. Now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft with the nose cone, and then you see the polished uh, belly here. Very impressive. I love that part. Closed nose gear door, the open nose gear door, the nose gear. Any clear beacon light there. Hold where the stand goes in it. The center bogey gears. They tilt. Okay. The Gemini Jets logo. Another couple more antennas there. The pressure relief valve. Another antenna. And the APU housing doors right there. And then there's the horizontal stabilizers. Let's check out the gears here. Okay engines there very detailed fuel dumb valve and the uh, high frequency antenna on the edge of the wing tip same over here folks okay no mind the engines there fuel dumb valve and the high frequency antenna on the edge of the wing tip there as well okay since i show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft and the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft in its entirety in detail now i'm going to put it on that wooden stand that i showed you earlier okay so no further ado here is the model on the stand okay finally got the model on the stand with no problem no hesitation you're looking at it in the uh port side you know you're in the takeoff landing position with all the gears intact right there the nice pan, pan am billboard livery right there very impressive now you're looking at the front angle of this aircraft here with the model on the stand. Very detailed there. How it's flexing on both sides a little bit. Nice engines there. Very impressive there as well, all right? And you're looking at this model on the starboard side. Man, this mug is a beauty. Woo! And finally, you're looking at this model from the tail cam angle. Man, this mug is a beautiful model. Woo! Sexy. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, before I take this model to stand, I got in this position for a reason, and the reason is these gears, I'm going to take these gears off here, and now I'll let you see this model without the gears in a different angle, okay? So let's start with the nose gear here. They are uh, magnetic and detachable. Gears over here. There as well. The bogey gear over here as well. There. And I got to take this off to get the center bow gears off, all right? They magnetic there as well. There as well, okay. Now, I'm, since I uh, took all the gears off, I'm gonna let you see it at a different angle. So here it is, folks. Now, now you're looking at this model in flight mode. Now, if you decide you want to leave it, display your model in this position here without the gears, that's fine. These gear replacements I showed you early, that's the purpose of these gear replacements to substitute your model. Substitute the gears while you display your model in flight mode. Or you can do the other option, just keep the gears on there like it's landing or taking off. It don't matter. It's still great, though, to say the least. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on here, take this model to stand, and go ahead and wrap up this model review, okay? All right, now the seating configuration. There were two seated configurated versions that Pan Am previously operated on their Boeing 747s. However, on this particular Pan Am Boeing 747-100 Jumbo Jetliner, the 1989 seated configurated version, it seated 377 passengers in a three-class configurated cabin layout. Now here's the breakdown, folks. Rows one to nine, which will be from here to about right here. You have 39 first-class seats in rows 10 to 13, which is the upper deck here to here. You have 16 clipper class seats, which is business class, and then rows 14 to 19, rear to here. You have an additional 36 clipper class seats, which brings a total of 52 clipper class seats, and rows 27 to 55, which will be about from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. 
you had an additional 286 economy class seats, which brings a total of 377 seats. And finally, Pan Am previously operated their Boeing 747 jumbo jets from their hubs in focus cities in New York, Miami, Frankfurt, Tokyo, London, Berlin, Honolulu, Houston, Boston, Los Angeles, Chicago, San Francisco, and Washington, D.C. to worldwide destinations on six inhabited continents from 1970 to 1991. I didn't even bother getting into details about the list of the cities. There's too many of them. I probably spent the extra five, seven minutes just doing that. I just didn't have that kind of time, okay? But anyway, this concludes this model review. Please rate and subscribe and let me know if you got this model or you plan on getting this model. I definitely highly recommend you get this model, especially if you're a diehard fan of the uh, Boeing 747 and if you're a diehard fan of Pan Am like I was. And I also want to uh, dedicate this to all the hardworking employees that used to work at Pan Am. Thanks for making the airline industry what it was, okay? So with that said, take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming.